remainder and factor theorem remainder and factor theorem just now what i said is when a number is divided by another number then in the process we get some leftover which we call as balance this balance is also called as remainder right yes, sir. it means the number which has a divided or the number which is a divided the number which is a divided is not exactly divisible when the number is not exactly divisible then we get remainder when the number is not exactly divisible then we get some remainder no yes, example if i divide 9 by 4 if i divide 9 by 4 we know that 9 is not divisible by 4 and so you will get some leftover and that leftover is called as remainder is this very clear yes sir such questions will belong to remainder theorem such questions will belong to remainder theorem now this remainder theorem questions can be done in two different ways one is by a normal division method you know the simple normal division method no? and then other method is by using the functional form by writing the dividend in the functional form also we can find the remainders either we can find the remainder by the normal division method or we can also find the remainder by functional method by assuming the dividend to be a function i'll show you everything is it very clear yes sir there can be another possibility that a number is divided and there is no remainder that is also possible yes sir now when you look for when you go for division only there are two possibility number one is when you divide and the number is not divisible in that case you get some remainder second possibility is you divide a number by another number and then the remainder becomes zero either the remainder will be a zero or will be a non zero now when you go for division there are only two possibility that the remainder is a zero or a non zero when the remainder is non zero we call it as a remainder and such questions are called as uh, are based on remainder theorem and when the remainder becomes zero it means the number is exactly divisible is exactly divisible in such case the one which has a divided that is the divisor the divisor is actually called as a factor then the divisor becomes a factor when the remainder comes a non zero then the divisor is not said to be a factor when the remainder is non zero then the divisor is not said to be a factor but when the remainder becomes zero then the divisor is said to be a factor example if if i divide 8 by 2 simple question 8 is divided by 2 what will be the remainder zero so you have divided 8 by 2 so 2 is a factor of 8 because it gives you the remainder zero is it okay so these two things these two basic things we have to keep in mind and then we are going to start this exercise is it okay Yes, so whatever i have said if you have any confusion now when i do it on the board it will be more clear to you all right yes sir now this question is the question says find the remainder when the expression is true okay find the remainder when this expression is divided by x plus 3 that means for us we know it is going to be dividend this is divisor right yes sir the question says find the remainder find the remainder that we this we can do in two different ways first question so i am going to show you both the methods and after that i will tell you which method we are going to use it now for the next question is it over yes sir uh in class 10 we have a study the same thing exactly the same thing but we did it by normal division method So first of all, I am going to introduce you that method. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, this is the dividend. I'm writing this as here. 3x cube plus 8x square minus 6x plus 1. And this is going to be divided by x plus 3. And then other side we will have the quotient. Now this is the question. We are going to find the remainder. The question is to find the remainder. So, I don't know how you have done in class 10. Okay. Now we are going to begin this. I will need a rough part to be at the safer side and to get the answer always correct. Right? You can always use the rough part, rough corner for this question. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Please keep your eye fixed on the board. To start now, I will take first term of the dividend and then divide it by first term of the divisor and simplify. This will become 3x2. 3x to the power 2. 3x squared. Now this way you got your first question. This is how you will get the first question. If you do this process, you will never have any mistake. So this is our first question, 3x squared. Is it okay? Yes. After getting the first question, what we are going to do is, this question will be then multiplied by the divisor. And then you will get the product and then you will write it here. Yes, so we are going to multiply it by divisor. x plus 1. <coughs> x plus 3. x plus 3. <coughs> first thing what I did is, I took the first sum of the divisor and divided it by first term, sorry, first term of the dividend and then divided it by first term of the divisor. This is how we got the first question. This question is then multiplied by the divisor. We are going to get the product. This is 3x cubed plus 9x squared. After getting this, we will write all the like terms in the same column. This line, this result, we are going to write in this line. But then while writing, you have to be a little careful. We will write only the like terms in the same column. <coughs> so we have first term as x cube, which is of this type. So we will write that under this line, under this column. <coughs> and then we have another term as x squared. We will write it here because these two are of the same type. So these two are written now. Is this two things clear? Yes. Sir. After this, you draw the line and then subtract. Now subtract. Now since we are going to subtract, so their sign will change. So this becomes negative, this also becomes <coughs> negative. This way, this will be cancelled because this is positive 3x cube and this is negative 3x cube. So it got cancelled. Now next, this is plus 8x squared and this is minus 9x squared. Now you can't say this is positive. It has become now negative. So plus 8 and minus 9 is minus 1. Minus 1x one squared means minus x squared. Now the remaining thing you have to write down. Minus 6x and then plus 1. Now this is no more your question. Your question is now changed. Now this has become your new question. This has become your new dividend. And every time with the new dividend, we will repeat the same process. Again, I am going to take first term of the dividend. Minus x squared. And this will be again divided by first term of the divisor. This is divided by x. And now answer is minus x. This is your another question. Minus x. With this question, you will again multiply the divisor. x plus 3. Write the answer. Minus x squared and then minus 3x. Again, you will write the like terms in the same form. So we have first term as minus x squared, minus x squared. Then minus 3x, minus 3x. And then draw the line, change the sign again because every time we are subtracting. So this will become now positive. This also will become now positive. So this is cancelled because this is minus x squared. This is plus x Cancel because their coefficients are same. The coefficient of this is minus 6. The coefficient of this is plus 3. So minus 6 plus 3 is minus 3x. And this is plus 1. Now again, you got a third dividend now. This became a third new question. Again, we will repeat the same step. We will take the first term of the divisor. Dividend. Negative 3x divided by first term of the divisor. Every time I repeat the same sentence. Now we simplify. This and this cancel. You get minus 3. This became your third question. With this, now we will multiply the divisor. x plus 3. And this is equal to 
negative 3x and the negative 9. We'll write it here, negative 3x and then negative 9. We'll change the sign, this will become positive, this also became positive, this will be cancelled because one is negative 3x and another is positive 3x. So it got cancelled because their coefficients are the same and one is positive and another is negative. These both are positive, this is plus 9, this is plus 1, so this is plus 10. Now after this we can't say this is a new dividend. Why? Because the degree of this has become lower than the degree of your divisor. The minute the degree of the remainder becomes lesser than the degree of the divisor, the division will end. The division will end. end. And this is the completion of your question now. This became your question and this became your remainder. The question is find out the remainder. So we will say there are four remainder is equal to 3. Is equal to 10. That's all. I hope this question is very, very clear to you now. Yes, sir. Thank you. <coughs> Alright. So now we are trying to see how are we going to do in class 11. What is the alternative method? Okay. And that alternative method is we will write this dividend in the function form as px is equal to so and so. And then from the divisor we will try to get the value of x. And to do so we will assume this as equal to 0. We will assume this as equal to 0. x plus x plus 3 is equal to 0. And hence x will be equal to negative 3. Now what we will do is we will put the value of x as a negative 3 in the given function. You calculate, you will get the same answer. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yeah. And this also is a very simple method. So let us see this now. P at negative 3 is equal to 3 negative 3 to the power 3 plus 8 negative 3 to the power 2 negative 6 negative 3 and then positive 1. Done? Yeah. <coughs> After this, we will start simplifying now. This 3 is as it is only, and this is negative base having the all power. So the result will become negative. And the cube of 3 is 27. So into negative 27. Now this is plus 8, and then this negative base having even power, result will be positive. 3 to the power 2 means 9. So into 9. This is negative 6, this is 2, both are negative, so the result will become positive. So 6 to the 18, this will be positive, 18, and this is plus 1. Now we will simplify this. 7, 7, 7 to the negative 81. 9 to the 72. Plus 18, and then plus 1 is equal to. Now all these 3 are positive. So for our convenience, we will add those 2 together. These 3 things together. 72 plus 18, 90. Plus 1, 91. Minus 81, and then plus 91 is equal to positive 10. Are these points the same? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I feel that this method is more easier than yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is this okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So hereafter, we will do all the questions in this way only. But before we again go to the next question, let me tell you in brief the topic name is the remainder and factor theorem. We are going to face two types of questions, but fortunately for both the type of questions we are going to do in the same manner. Nothing will change. Nothing will change. There is no difference between the remainder question and then the factor question. The difference is when, when the question is belonging to a remainder theorem, you will get some remainder. If the question does not belong to a remainder theorem, it means it will belong to factor theorem. In that case, your answer will be always zero. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Remainder and factor theorem is based on the concept of division. division. No, when a number is divided by another number, there are two possibilities. There are two possibilities. Either you get a remainder or you don't get the remainder. Well? Yes, sir. 
if we don't get the remainder, then the divisor is said to be the factor. Then the divisor is said to be factor. Example, if 8 is divided by 2, then the remainder comes 0, and so 2 is said to be the factor of 8. Is this very clear? Yes, sir. So we are comfortable with the number system. If we say 10 divided by 3, 8 divided by 2, we are, this is called a number system. We are comfortable with the number system, but we are not very comfortable with the divisibility of the algebraic expression. And in this exercise, we are dealing with the algebraic expression. Remainder theorem or factor theorem is for algebraic expression. Is it very clear? Yes. So, normally what we do here is, the process of doing this exercise is, we, are, we used to assume the dividend as a function in the form of Px. And then from the divisor, we get the value of x, and then we punch it, substitute it, and then solve. And then if we get the result as 0, we say the divisor is a factor, otherwise not. This is what we have seen from question number 1. Yes, we did one of the question, right? Yes, sir. Now we are going to see the application of that remainder theorem or factor theorem. It's a very simple application. We'll go to question number 2. Question number 2. Here the dividend is, we can write this as Px is equal to x cubed plus 3x square minus kx plus 4. This is your dividend. And the divisor is x minus 2. x minus 2. From here we can get the value of x by assuming this as equal to 0 and therefore the value of x is equal to 2. Now according to the question, for x at 2, the remainder is k. The remainder is k. k. That means this x minus 2 is not a divisor, I mean it is not a factor. It is just a divisor. Is it okay? Yes, yes, sir. So when you put the value of x as equal to 2, then it gives you a remainder of 5. It gives you a remainder of 5. Sorry, k. 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 And therefore, we can write this as p at 2, the remainder is equal to k. According to the question? Yes, sir. p at 2 is equal to k. k. Is it okay? Yes, now, because the left hand side is considered to be equal to k, that means the right hand side also will be equal to k. Yes, sir. Right? So, in this right hand side, we will put the value of x as equal to 2, and then this value will be equal to k. k. And then we can find the value of k. Alright? Yes, so, sir. we can take this as uh, 2q plus 3 into 2 square minus k into 2 plus 4 and this is equal to k. We will form it and get the value of k. 2 to the power 3 is 8 plus 2 to the power 2 is 4. 4 to the 12 minus 2k plus 4 is equal to k. Now all this will come in the right now. No? So these two will be taken together. So this will go to right side. It will become positive. So this is 2k plus k is 3k and this side we have 8 plus 12 20 plus 4 24 and therefore k will be equal to 24 divided by 3 it is equal to yes sir it's very simple no yes sir we can see question number four question number four says find the value of a same as question number two in question number two you have calculated the value of K. Now we are asked to calculate the value of A. A. For the given dividend, when it is divided by X plus 3, and it leaves a remainder of 5. It leaves a remainder of 5. So, we will write the function as PX. PX is equal to AX cubed plus 9X squared plus 4X minus 10. Am I right? Yes. And here the divisor is x plus 3. So the value of x will be equal to negative 3. Now according to the question, for this value of x, this function gives you a remainder of 5. 
it gives you element of 5. So how do we write that? Given function for x is equal to minus 3, the remainder is equal to 5. <coughs> That's all right? Yes, so now we'll take the right hand side and we'll put the value of x and equal to minus 3. This will be that a minus 5, sorry, minus 3 to the power of 3 plus 9, negative 3 to the power of 2 plus 4, negative 3 minus 10. This is equal to 5. Is this very clear? Yes, sir. Now we will simplify and find the value of a. Now this is negative 3 and the power is odd number. So the result of this will be negative. And therefore this will become negative 27 a. Is that right? Yes sir. This will become positive because the power is even. So now this is 9 and 9 9 is 81. Now this is minus 12 and this is minus 10. This is equal to 5. We will simplify all these things together and then we will send it to the right side. Is it okay? This is this two are negative, minus 22, this is positive 81. So 11 minus 2, 9, and 7 minus 2, 5. This is positive. Because this number is greater in magnitude and it is positive. So the result will be also positive. And then after calculating this part, minus 27 a. This is plus 59 is equal to 5. After this, this will be sent to right side. So this is minus 27. A is equal to 5 minus 59. This is all simple calculation. No? And you can say minus 27. A is equal to minus 54. Is it understood? Yes. Yes. Very simple calculation. Minus minus plus. This is A is equal to 54 divided by 27 is equal to 0. So this is the application of remainder of factor theorem. We use the concept of remainder theorem, factor theorem, and find the value of unknown quantity. Yes, sir. Any question? No, no sir. sir. Thank you. This question you can see here. Now slight twist, slight. Okay. There are two polynomial distance. So far you got only one polynomial, one divisor. <coughs> Obviously, there will be one remainder. Yes, sir. Or maybe no remainder. Yes, sir. If the divisor is a factor, then there will be no remainder. Okay? I want you all to be serious. Listen to me. This is the first question where there are two dividends have a common divisor. Two different dividends. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Two different dividends. A common divisor, so. but leaving the same remainder. Mm. If it is so, then find the value of a. a. Two different dividends, common divisor, yeah. leaving the remainder same, then find a. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you getting the situation or not? Yes, yes, sir. Sir. I'll give you one example. Two different dividends. One dividend is 10, another dividend is 100. These are two dividends. Yes, Divisor same, 3. Divide 10 by 3, you get the remainder 1. Divide 100 by 3, remainder is 1. Yes, sir. So it is practically possible. No? Yes, sir. Practically possible. So this is that situation where there are two different dividends, have a common divisor, but it leaves the same remainder. It leaves the same remainder. And then so find the value of A. See, nothing will change. Nothing will change. Because just there are two dividends, so the work amount will be double. Normally what you do with one dividend, one divisor, and one remainder. So far we have seen in question number one, two, three. Yes, sir. What we have done, how we have done it when we have when we had one dividend, one divisor, and one remainder. From the divisor, we calculated the value of the unknown quantity x, and then that we have put it in the function, and that function was equated equal to the remainder. Yes, sir. This is what we have done, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here, because there are two dividends, so we will do the same thing for two times. Okay? We'll take the dividend, 
the divisor and the remainder. This is one set. Do the question for one time. Then another time you take another dividend. The same divisor, the same remainder. And do it another time. Is this okay? Yes, because the two functions are giving you the same remainder. So they will be then finally equated. They will be finally equated. I am going to show you that. So, solution. This function I will denote as a Px. Shall I go? Yes, sir. Px is equal to this. Right? Your divisor is x minus 2. Keep in mind. And this is your equal to ax cubed plus 4x squared plus 3x minus 4. Alright? Yes, we know that the dividend is uh, divisor is x minus 2 and that will give you the value of x that gives you the value of x so the value of x from here will be equal to 2 positive 2 right so p as 2 will give you the remainder right but what is the remainder that we don't know it's not given but it is said that the remainder are same yes okay. sir so this will give you some remainder right this will give you some remainder just keep it as it is because we don't write now what is the remainder. So I will just write it equal to. Okay? And how much will be the remainder? That we don't know. So we will wait a while for some time. So we will go to the second part. Another function is this. Now this we are denoting as Px. If this also we denote by the same Px, then we cannot confuse them, no? Yes, sir. So we yes. know that we will take P dash x. P dash x. And this is equal to your x cube minus 4x minus 2. Now with this dash sign, we are able to differentiate that this is the first function, this is the second function. Yes. Now here also, for this also we have the same divisor, so we will use the same value of x. Yes, sir. Right? P dash 2. And this also will give you some remainder, no? Yes, sir. This and this are giving you the same remainder or not? Yes, yes sir. So, I will delete this part and I will write p dash 2. Are you getting me? Yes, sir. This money right here. We have brought it together because they give us the same limiter. They give us the same limiter. And that is why I wrote it together. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Now we know how to elaborate this part. In this, we will put the value of x as equal to 2, and then in place of this, we will write this one, right? Yes, sir. Similarly, for this, we will take this one. And yes, then we'll put the value of x as equal to 2. Have I understood? Yes, sir. So, this is a 2 to the power 3 plus 4 2 to the power 2 plus 3 into 2 minus 4 is equal to this one, 2 to the power 3 minus 4 into 2 minus 8. Now when you simplify this, you have already the power. Yes, sir. 2 to the power 3, 8 into 8, 8, 8. 4, 4 the 16. 3 to the 6 minus 4 is equal to 8 minus 8 minus 8. Plus 8 minus 8 cancel. Yes, sir. Now we will take the light terms on the same side and the same side get the value of A. So this A, a will go to, or uh, this A and this A P are light terms. So they will be written together. So I am bringing this minus A to this side, so become plus plus. This is 8A a plus A. This side, 16 plus 6, 22. 22 minus 4, 18. Yes, sir. That is positive 18. This positive 18, when it goes to the other side, it will become negative 18. Right? 8a plus 1a, 9a. 9a is equal to minus 18. And this implies your a is equal to minus 18 divided by 9 is equal to negative 2. So this is the value of your a. Was it interesting question or not? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, 
we now, now after doing this many questions, no, we have to know exactly that if I am having a dividend, a divisor, and a remainder, then what I am supposed to do, yes, sir. Yes, isn't yes, it? Sir. Yes, sir. So please be very very mindful. So since here there are two sets given, complete two sets is given. So we have to do the work for two times. Same thing we have to do for two times. We have to do for each set. Here also we had two sets, but then the divisor was shared. Yes, and then the remainder also was shared. Still we did it. Still yes, we did sir. it. So this question is more easier than the previous one. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. So we will see this question. Question number five says. Question number five says, if A and B be the remainders, now here the remainders are given to you in terms of capital A and capital B. B. The remainders are A and B of the two given expressions. Can you see those expressions? Yes, sir. And they are divided by y minus 1 and y plus 2. So now from here you have clearly understood that we have two different sets of questions. Is this okay? Yes, we have complete two sets in this question. So we will solve it for two times. When you solve it for two times, the remainders are given to you in terms of capital A and capital B. By solving it, you will get the value of A and the value of B. After that, the question says, if 2a plus b is equal to 0, then find the value of small a. So what we will do is, we will solve the question for two times. And one, first time you will get the value of capital A, second time you will get the value of capital B. And after having the value of these two, then we will put it in this given equation, the last equation, 2a plus b is equal to 0. And then simplify, you will get the value of your small a. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So let us see how to do this. We will mark the first function as ps, and this is given equal to. Sorry, here in this expression, the variable used is y. Yes, sir. No, yes, sir. and therefore we will make a change in this part. So this also will be now y. Y cube plus two y square minus five a y minus 7. Now, according to question, the remainder is capital A from the first set and the divisor is y minus 1. That means what would be the value of y? 1. Positive 1. So, that means P as a positive 1, the remainder is equal to A. And now we'll process this question. Okay? Likewise, we'll go for the another set. And then there is p dash y is equal to y cube y cube plus a y square minus 12 y plus 16. Right? And here for this dividend, the divisor is y plus 2. And therefore the value of y is negative 2. So p dash at negative 2, according to the question, the remainder is. G. We'll solve this one first of all. So, 1 cube plus 2 into 1 square minus 5 into a into 1 minus 7, and this is equal to capital A. Is it very simple? Yes. 1 cube means 1, 1 square means 1, 1 into 2 means 2, minus 5a. Minus 7 is equal to A, and therefore, finally, A is equal to minus 5A. Now, this, this, and then these are light terms, so they will be simplified. So, 1 plus 2, 3, 3 minus 7, minus 4. And that's how you got the value of E. So, by solving, we got the value of A. Now, similarly, we'll solve this, and then we'll get the value of B. So, negative 2, Q plus a into negative 2 square minus 12 into negative 2 and then plus 16 this is equal to b right yes sir uh, this will be negative 8 no yes, negative 8 this will become positive 4 a this will become positive 24 and this is 16 is equal to capital b now capital b will be equal to finally 4 a and then 24 plus 16, 14. Minus 8, 